everyone. I am Rebecca from Chembits, and today we are going to do some dip dyeing. In this pot, I have eight cups of water, and I'm going to add one tablespoon of white vinegar as we heat up our dye bath. Today, we are going to dip dye some yarn using the Americolor Navy Blue Soft Gel Paste Food Coloring. This one is unique because it has blue number one, but the second food coloring ingredient is blue number two, which is not something that we find frequently in food coloring. I think that my favorite Wilton's Black paste had blue number two in it, that they, the old, I think it's like the new old formula, or I forget what I called it. The current one does not. But so this has blue number two, and also has red number three and red number 40 in it. But I'm curious what we will see when we try dip dyeing some Stroll Fingering Weight Sock Yarn in a mixture with this color. I am pre-soaking the Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn from Knit Picks, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, in just some plain tap water for a minimum of 30 minutes. When I'm doing dip dyeing, I like to pre-mix the colors um, before I do the dip dyeing. So let's start off with see, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen drops of this navy blue food coloring. Looking at the color in the cup, it definitely feels purplish. Then as I mix it, you can see we've got a nice deep blue color. So I'm very excited to dip dye. And as soon as our pot is hot, we will add the dye immediately before dip dyeing the yarn. We're at a boil. I'm going to reduce that heat. Um, I have wrung out a lot of the yarn from, or sorry, a lot of the water from our pre-soak. Now I'm going to add our navy food coloring. Give this a quick stir. And we're going to start dipping. Now, when I'm talking about food coloring breaking, what I mean is that different colors absorb at different rates. And so therefore, when you start with, say, a mixture of one color, you might in fact see multiple colors come out on the yarn from dip dyeing. And so here even, you know, right away, you can see that it is more purple at one end, and we're getting this brighter blue towards the other. Um, it does seem like most of the reds have absorbed. I'm going ahead and sort of shaking in that last edge. And so the difference between a color breaking versus just a gradient is that it's not just a saturation difference between one end and the other, and that you're actually seeing a hue shift. Whereas like at this point there is, I can see that there is a little bit of purple in there, which I know because there was red three and red 40 in this mixture. But now I'm gonna go ahead and let this sort of sit in the pot for about, oh, five minutes or so. There's still a fair amount of blue and we will eventually need to add some more vinegar for the rest of these blues to bind even though things bind quicker on like a super wash yarn like this than just 100% untreated wool. But we'll be back in five minutes. It's been five minutes, I'm gonna reduce the heat a tiny more. And there's just a bare hint of blue. Most of it has absorbed. Now, I only used 15 drops. I'm gonna go ahead and add another tablespoon of vinegar. I don't think it's completely necessary but there's certainly no harm. We might get that last bit of color to absorb. Uh, certainly this color does not look navy, even at the darkest end. I think that if I were to ramp up the number of drops that I included, that we would be able to get a more intense color. However, we definitely have something here with a great level of saturation and it is really, really stunning. Uh, I am curious to see, you know, if we would get something that looked navy, if we were mixing the colors and hand painting um, versus doing a more extreme breaking attempt. But 
I am going to turn off the heat and let this cool off in the pot. Um, while it's cooling off, it'll still be exposed to heat, and we might see, I mean, that water is basically clear. So I'll probably remove it in a little bit, but being exposed to a little more heat never hurts anything. And yeah, once we're cool, we'll go wash our yarn. Let's wash our yarn um, right away. You know, all that color is in there and our dye bath is completely clear. Yeah, I would say, goodness, I don't think I've done royal blue on stroll roving, and it's hard for me to say what the blue number two might be doing, how that might be coming into play. I'm not really sure how that finds in relation with blue number one. I just added some clear dish soap just for show. Clearly, I mean, the color is navy. There's a lot more red, I'm oh, sorry, a lot more blue than red. I'm feeling like the red is basically there to help deepen the, the tone overall to keep it from being really bright. But 10 drops, or sorry, 15 drops gave us a really, really beautiful color. It would be pretty fun to double this. I don't know if I have enough left in the bottle. These drops are fairly big and not super consistent, but anyway, I'm now going to print this out on the one more time and hang up the yarn to dry. Here is our finished yarn dip dyed into Americolor Navy. These colors are bright, reasonably saturated, I think if I were to double or triple the amount of dye, we might get something that starts to feel a little more like it came from a navy. This sort of feels like it came from a cross between Wilton's Violet and Wilton's Royal Blue. There's more red in here than there is in the Royal Blue, for sure. Um, and we can see that lightly through this whole darker section. I'm not sure what the blue number two brings into play because the final blue at the very end feels very much like blue number one to me. Of course, we also have no idea about the proportions of the different colors. This is mostly blue number one, so it does make sense. It feels familiar. There was a chance it would feel like something brand new, but Whatever it is, it is still really, really beautiful, and I'd really like to play with it more in the future. Now, again, like how important is the blue number two in this colorway? Could I create a dupe for this with the Wilton Colorite food coloring system? Maybe. Uh, I know that I've been pretty hard on Americolor in a lot of my videos because I'm not a fan of the, um, of the applicator bottles. I think that it's really hard to get the drops out. But I think that some of the colors and mixtures that they have created are really beautiful. So maybe if you were to buy an individual color in one of the larger bottles, it wouldn't be as frustrating to get the colors out. Um, I suppose it's also technically possible that I got like a bad batch. Um, and so it's not always as hard to squeeze out all of the colors. But certainly I have struggled with my Nifty 50 set. All that being said, we've got a beautiful purple and blue dip dyed colorway that I, can, I, that I know will turn into something really, really fantastic. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two new videos every single week, and you really don't want to miss any of them. So make sure you also tap that bell icon so you get a notification every time I post. If you love the yarn that I dye and want to bring some of it home, check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. My shop is filled with hundreds of skeins of hand-dyed yarn that have been featured in past or upcoming YouTube videos. So you can shop and then watch me make the yarn that you just bought. How cool is that? Thank you so much for watching.